So the company operates its mobile payment app, Alipay. Uh, it's in, into consumer lending as well as insurance products distribution. Uh, in terms of uh, regulators, as we talk about uh, the National Financial Regulatory Ad Administration, this is the body that now regulates these companies. Do you think moving away from fintech, will they be moving on towards the likes of artificial intelligence? Because that, that of course, is just taking off. Or will it be something else? So what is the next target in terms of risk and regulation? I think in terms of uh, risk and regulation you know, for any group, of, obviously, uh, well, it can we start is the loan plan, but at the same time, we need to know that um, you know a lot of regulatory issues has been brought um, into the attention of the investors. So it means that the end group will be operating in a more traditional model, you know, like a commercial banks or whatever we have seen in the Chinese banking sectors. But at the same time, you know, how to mingle AI elements with the financial in uh, business and development. I think Chinese government at this point in time is still thinking about how to, you know, you know, control these two matters at the same time. But I do think that, you know, the government wants the end group to put in more energy in this level and also to work with other financial institutions and banks to develop a new model for the uh, business development and to the private sectors to, you know, bring energy and to bring new elements to the capital market. Ronald, I've got to ask you because, you know, it always seems to be a case of especially the likes of an Alibaba, for example, of two steps forward, one step back when it comes to the share price. Because, you know, it wasn't too long ago where we had that six-way split. They were pushing 100 and the expectation was we could see 130, 150. Same goes for this. You know, we saw an 8% rip on the ADRs. Now it's ameliorated a little bit to three. And, you know, there was this real thought process that it was the regulatory overhang that was causing the pressure to the, to the share price. So if it's not the regulatory, and if it's not the, the growth potential, is it realistically all geopol and all in terms of just that sentiment of you know, overseas investors being scared to buy into Baba? Uh, well, I think investors need to bear in mind that um, Alibaba in the past has um, achieved a very high growth rate, uh, including uh, the East Affiliate Company and Group. But in future, I think because both companies will be operating in a more traditional manner, I think I do think that the growth rate of these two companies uh, will be significantly restricted, uh, you know, in future. So it means that the valuation of both companies, you know, basically will be kind of limited. Even though uh, we've seen the good news that uh, the settlement of the you know dispute uh, in, on the regulatory front. But still, it means that you know, in future, you know, the end group may be operating like a state-owned bank in China. So basically, I don't think that is a very good news in terms of um, you know over a longer period of time. But still, you know, because the regulatory front and regulatory issues has been changing every day, I think that it may be one day that um, the government want to add in more you know energy and more you know relax the control measures, and it will bring you know more regulatory. Um, I mean, in terms of a relax in future, so that will definitely be positive to the valuation of the company. But in short terms, I do believe that investors should bear in mind that the growth rate of these two companies will be restricted and the valuation will be affected somehow.